This week, episode 309 of Stogie Geeks, we interview Jonathan Lipson, sales director for Alec. Let me start that over. This week, we interview Jonathan Lipson, director of sales and marketing at Alec Bradley Cigars. In our first segment, in our second segment, we interview Aman, managing partner for DAV Cigars. And we are going to talk all things Alec Bradley. And for some of you Stogie Geeks, who have might heard some lingo of Alec and Bradley, we're going to get a definition of the difference and what is going on with the experimental series of Alec Bradley. It all starts right now on episode 309 of Stogie Geeks. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And a Vintage Cigar Club located in Warwick, Rhode Island is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to episode 309 of Story Geeks. I'm your host, Joe Hosempa. We have a live via Skype. We have Drew over there in Texas. Drew, what's going on? Nothing much. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> I forgot to turn on my mic. We'll call you Audio Drew, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's nice over here. It's uh, in the 40s, uh, so we got out of that 90s temperature, but now it's rainy. You said 40? Yeah. 40? Uh, well, what rain. do we have? 46 degrees actually right now. Yeah, man. I actually think we we're we're, we're rocking a cool 51 degrees right now, and uh, uh, I'm smoking Alec Bradley, so um, it's a pretty good Friday for sure. Here. You know, I wanted my Bloody Mary, and the guy next door uh, 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 has uh, three customers, and my Bloody Mary supposedly is being delivered. I don't uh, know. You know, it's like what I do, Grubhub or something like that. Anyway, we also have Jonathan Lipson. He is the director of sales and marketing at Alec Bradley Cigars. We are about to talk all things Alec Bradley, experimental series with Alec Bradley. I'm super excited about that. I want to know the difference, and we're going to talk uh, about Alec and Bradley in that line as well. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Gentlemen, how are we doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. First of all, Jonathan, I just want to thank you. Uh, you had sent us some uh, super cool stuff from the experimental series. You sent us some Alec Bradley Tempest and um, uh, well organized. You're one of the organized people who have been on Story Geeks because there's nothing worse than 10 minutes before the show, me going through the probably six or seven boxes that get delivered on a daily basis. Then we're cutting open cigars to find out which ones are the ones we bought and which ones we need for the promo for the show. So thank you for being organized. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Who's got it better than you? You know, I don't know. Well, Drew's <laughs> doing pretty good over there in Texas. Drew, say hi to Jonathan. Hey, good afternoon, Jonathan. How's it going over there, Florida? Fantastic. Drew, how are you? Oh, yeah. We're over here in Bedford, Texas, so we're getting uh, – we're enjoying this nice cool weather finally. Yeah. Uh, if you call 80 down here, cool. We're doing all right. You are. You are. I was just in Miami <laughs> three weeks ago, Jonathan. I love – I love Miami. Like I, I love that town, oh, that city. I love it. It's awesome, you know. I, I yeah, no complaints about Miami. I, I, I went down to uh, uh, Kaya Ocho over mm. there, and that's a freaking yep. that's a like. I mean, you want to talk about a place where you can like st- almost step back in time and and and, uh, and 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 really go back. And what I love about some of the cigar bars there is they're like rum bars. You know what I mean? They have tons of mm-hmm. rum and tons of stuff and. It's super cool. It's definitely a, a super cool vibe over there. Um, you play dominoes? I did not play dominoes. I, I I didn't. I actually they had a Cuban band and we were dancing. So 
I'm, oh, nice. a, I'm a dancer. I, I'm not going to lie. You know, I can I can ballroom dance. Uh, scored second in the competition for tango. True story. Uh, anyway, oh. but yeah, so, you know, if, you know, I got my girl, I got my kid. We're going to friggin' smoke some cigars. And, you know, what I like about it is, like, it's outdoors, too. So it's, like, it was super cool. Like, you know, I, I won't, like, smoke around the kid, obviously, but, uh, you know, it, it was, like, outdoors and the, and the patting, they're, they're dancing and they had a Cuban band. It was so cool, though. You know, and where the band, where the other band was playing was indoors, which I found interesting. You couldn't smoke, like, indoors. Like in um, mm. some of the bars, but you can smoke on like the patio, which which everything has a patio on that on that strip there too. So it was kind of cool. So I was able to have a cigar, sit and chill, and then go and dance and not be in a cigar and be close, you know, close to loved ones and and cut a rug up there, and it was super nice. cool, you know. And the owner kept serving us, you know. I guess we're dancing. Not a lot of people dancing. We're dancing of style, and the owner kept serving us drinks. I'm like, sir, I I gotta like I got a little one. I gotta take it easy. You know, <laughs> you know, Uber, but, uh, yeah, Uber, Uber, yeah, right. That that would not look good, Ubering with a kid, and that's not setting a good example. I'm I'm trying to set a good example. You know, it's only gonna be a matter of time until my kid finds me on the TV, and I don't know if he's gonna like the shows, right? <laughs> you know. But anyway, um, thank you for joining us here on Story Geeks. Want to catch up with Alec Bradley Cigars. Want to catch up with your position, Alec Bradley Cigars. Definitely want to get into a sales and marketing aspect of that, uh, how things have changed. If you could just give give us an idea of how long you've been in the industry, where were you before then, and, how, and, how, and kind of your journey with Alec Bradley so that we can tailor the discussion around the sales and marketing of all the fascinating things that are happening with Alec Bradley, especially the experimental series as well. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I take it uh, back to when I was 18. I mean, I'm 35 now. I started working in a shop right after high school, before college uh, in Philadelphia. From there, uh, throughout college, I worked at uh, David Ehrlich's in Boston, which mm. unfortunately is now defunct. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it was the, the Churchill Cigar Bar at the Boston Millennium. Uh, that was a great, great experience. I think I spent more time there than I did in class. Um, I was a headhunter for like six months, hated that, mm. left, no plans, worked at the shop I worked at in Philly before I, um, <clears throat> before I, I could find anything else, ended up working at Holtz in Philadelphia. Oh, really? Did a, a few, yep, did a few years with them. Uh, from there I went to La Florida Minicana for a couple of years and from LFD, I went to Alec Bradley. Uh, right after Alan received Cigar of the Year for Prince Otto Churchill. Mm. Uh, I ran New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, uh, the boroughs into Westchester uh, for them. And um, I've been down here, what, for like three years now as the director of sales and marketing. So uprooted my life from Philadelphia, came down here, and, uh, you know, been sitting at my desk since. Do you like my South Florida or are you cool with it? I do. Okay, because most people are like yeah. they either work down there and like travel out and like hate it, or they really, really like it. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm asking. That's all. My, no, my days on the road are, are over. I enjoyed my time. You know, I spent the the best years of my 20s on the road, jumping. You know, throughout that tri-state area, and before that with LFD, I ran uh, New Jersey down to Virginia. That was a great experience as well. Uh, but the days of me hopping around in hotels, those days are pretty much over outside of like IPCPR or anytime we have to go down to Honduras and Nicaragua, anything like that. But uh, I'm, I like to say I'm the guy behind the guy behind the guy. Yeah, sure. Sure. What's it like to like, you know, you have to stick with your traditional branding arguments and then do that there. But what's it like when when you're doing a test blend? And you don't know what to call it, or maybe you do know what to call it, but you know, you, you that somebody has an idea, like although, like other, you know, and, and and then you get a chance to 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 market that, right? So now you have to make a choice, right? How is it going to be positioned in that marketplace, as well as stay underneath that corporate umbrella of what we represent as a company, so. You know, it's funny, Joe, because it all depends. It depends on the blend. It depends on the name. You know, sometimes we go in, all right, we have the name and we blend for the name. And sometimes just the blend pops up and it's like, all right, 
we have a, you know, we have a list of names or if, even if we don't have a list of names, we come up with names all the time. It's like, all right, so this is project 40, you know, this is, you know, gatekeeper, this is, you know, blind faith, whatever, whatever that may be, you know, it depends on the mood of the company at the time. You know, we are, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Alec Bradley, you know, we're a, a small family owned operation founded by Alan Rubin in 1996. You know, we, we can pivot. We can definitely pivot. You know, we'll talk about it later, but you know, you have, you know, you have Alec Bradley, the, the home company, you have Alec and Bradley cigars, which is, you know, within the family that's, you know, Alan Rubin's two kids, Alec and Bradley, the namesakes of the company. And then uh, recently Alan uh, purchased the Lars Deaton's brand, uh, which is a condition brand of cigars, um, essential oils and botanicals. Uh, something completely different than what Alec Bradley is traditionally doing. So, you know, a lot of people think of us as a, a much larger company with a humongous umbrella. But, um, you know, we, at the end of the day, we are a small, small company with family roots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and purchasing the the Lars Teton brands for you Stogie Geeks listeners, I'm going to date myself. When I owned a cigar shop in the late 90s and early 2000s, Lars Teton's used to just have a label with a red string around it for that series and whatnot. And I remember, now, correct me if um, I'm about right, probably, 20 years, yeah. It was just about the time that the Acids had launched, because Acid just did the 20-year anniversary so the timing's right yeah because i remember because i remember like when i first owned the shop we, we really didn't have like a lot of acid stuff we had a lot of true estate stuff right? you know what i mean they had your java and, and and stuff but you know and then like that whole infuse there and then last he like like was i i believe i'm like 99 percent sure of that like first to market with the infuse stuff you know um there and then um the acid line came and then you have, but it's a different process because one's like oil based Absolutely. infusion, which is the last heat ends. And then the other is the drew based <laughs> infusion, which, you know, is under lock and key and secret cover unless you go to the Oasis or whatever the heck it's called and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, it, it, either way, I think that those are interesting, pro interesting projects, you know, and then you got to remember at the time, call it 1999, 20 years ago, you had dial up internet, right? And not that that was a big factor, but you didn't have social media. You didn't have the, anything to get the word out and, 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 and focus on much more other than magazine publications or trade shows, right? So, um, and Lars Teens himself is an interesting guy because outside of cigars, if you ever Google him and throw him into Google, like he did super cool stuff 20 years ago. I can only imagine like what he's up to now, because like he was eccentric twenty years ago. He had metal skateboards. He had metal skateboards, and like like this guy like spoke my language, because like I skated vert until I was thirty seven. I'm forty. I'm I'm forty five now, right? So so you know it's it's like it's like you know like he had metal skateboards and 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 like they were long boards, and he got into hats and 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 clothing and 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 just a lifestyle brand of what he is and then there you go and i don't want to take away from from the from the alec bradley stuff but talk to me a little bit about like how that happened like you know, you know what i mean like did, like was you guys just all at ipcpr one day and says you know that guy's freaking cool let's see if he wants to come aboard you know <laughs> uh, lars is not the ipcpr type he's not the uh you know the uh i um what were they before IPC? They've gone through so many. Oh main yeah, it's Scott Con now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. whatever, whatever that is. I mean, he is a free spirit. I mean, he is he's definitely a free spirit. You know, he he traces his back his company back to '79, mm. which is way way before Alan Rubin. You know, uh, this this company started in '96, and I think Lars was probably you know he was he was I don't know how far back. You know, he was actually very very popular. I know he was extraordinarily popular in the '90s. Uh, especially around the boom time, I, I think, you know, he was an innovator. He was definitely an innovator of his time. His blends and his conditioning process, you know, helped speak to an audience that wasn't completely ready to smoke a, a you know, a cigar that was like, you know, tobacco that was traditional. You know, I think his products, you know, helped, you know, they were kind of like a stepping stone into that or people just liked, you know, that, um, 
you know, that, that conditioned cigar, you know, and then that kind of transitioned, you know, some people into something that was a little bit more infused, like say the acids, you know, Jonathan Drew and Marvin Samuel, they used to, uh, you know, they were the distributors for Lars for a very, very long time. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as how this whole relationship, you know, was put together, you know, Alan, several years ago, Alan, Alan's always been a, a big fan of what Lars is and who he is. And he kind of tracked them down. You know, he, he met him on a couple different occasions. And then one time he's like, I really need to sit and talk with this guy. And as the story goes, they were at a, a shop in Pennsylvania right outside of Philly. You know, and they'd set a meeting for like 10 p.m. Lars showed up at 2 a.m. And <laughs> right, right in the back of his truck pulled out, you know, a little uh, a pot and, you know, some type of burner with him and made Allen lobster mac and cheese at 2 in the morning. Hell yeah. That, that, so, I, that's awesome. <laughs> they talked until like 5 a.m. And then it's just been a process over the last couple of years. It's like, all right, you know, this is something completely different. You know, Alan took a stab at it and, and here we are. And, um, you know, the first Lars Tetons presented by Alec Bradley, that started uh, shipping right after IPCPR this year, yep. you know, August, September. Yep, and then uh, of that line, I think it's it's the the five, seven, or nine that you've launched off of that numbers wise. I've had Steampunk and the SS so far. I haven't blown through all of the uh, repertoire. That SS is so interesting. The SS um, is definitely interesting. For, <laughs> you know, for those of you uh, story geeks who are just listening, uh, if you Google the Lost Tetons or go to Alec Bradley website and look up the Lost Tetons SS, I mean, it, it's just what, what what I like about that, and then we can kind of pivot to Alec Bradley. Um, what what I like about that is is like you know Lost Tetons is just like if you're in the mood for something, you know, you like smoking cigars, okay? And we all go through our cadence of cigars, and we have a cigar limit. Or whatever it is, daily, weekly, budget, whatever the reason is. And if you want something freaking completely different, that's one of the brands that you need to like, like definitely look into for sure. It's just different, you know. It's just different. And then the same thing, like if you know, if you were in the skateboarding world and you wanted freaking like a longboard to knock around with that was freaking metal and probably the last skateboard you're gonna buy. <laughs> Like you would buy a lot to your skateboard, like you know what I mean? It's freaking metal. I mean, you could do board slides on them. I've done it, and they work. Like they in the metal. Like I, you have, I have fell on my ass because when metal meets PVC coping with a little bit of uh, sex wax on there. Now, for those of you who don't skateboard, it's you can Google like surfboard sex wax, not whatever your fantasy is, sex wax. Anyway, you put that on there, and then you go, and you're, you're like, you'll fucking fly on a metal skateboard. Anyway. That's my last teen story. Um, I'm, I think that that's awesome. They, they had lobster mac and cheese, put a deal together, and now you, you've you launched that. And I am sure, just knowing how Alec Bradley is as a company, I am sure that there will be more stuff that will be coming down the road. Definitely. You know? The guy's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blends and, you know, different essential oils. I, I don't even know the process. You know, there's only Lars knows the process. He goes down there, he does his little cook up and whatever that is, you know, and a lot of people, you know, the big thing right the second, a lot of people who weren't around in the nineties, a lot of cigar smokers who weren't around the nineties, uh, the you know, they kind of like, all right, it's, you know, it's a, a Drew estate. It's something like a Drew estate or it's infused and it's flat. You know, Joe, you, you smoked it, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not that. Right, yeah, you know, right. it's just it's a completely different. It's just experience. completely different. And then I'm even going to even go ahead and describe the packaging of the Laz Tetons. Right, the, the packaging they used oil, and I'm sure this was an experimental process because besides the little red band and all of that stuff, it came in a baggie that would probably be about the size. Where am I? All right, that would probably be the size of like these two cigars here, right? So it's like a little baggie, Ziploc baggie, okay. And then it had a cotton, uh, a circular. It's like a cotton ball, but it was like a, a. It was it was it was a little bit heavier than a cotton ball, but it would caught it caught the oils. And then they had a sticker, like he would literally take a, a sticker of what it is on the bag, and you could tell like wherever they were packaging these or whatever, like they were hand making like the friggin' stickers, appealing the thing. Like we're talking like ultra underground in a world of non-internet. We're ultra, like, we all like underground stuff, craft beer, spirits, boutique cigars, experimental series cigars, uh, uh, any consumer in any industry. I mean, that's why, like, 
Tesla does super cool because when they first came out, because you know you can get your super cool freaking underground freaking hippie stick car. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you know, and, you know whatnot. But pe- but the point is they they flocked to that and they came out in an era of there and thrived and done that. And I remember like the oils like you could put and we we used to like mess around at the shop because working in a shop or owning a shop, you spend a lot of time at the shop. Like you could reuse the bag. So if you have like a really crappy stick, you could throw a lot and, and you and you smoke the last tier. You can throw it in there with the because it catches the oils and it would infuse and it's it's rowdy. Anyway, Drew, do you have a question for Jonathan? Are you there, Drew? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm here. <laughs> I, no, I was just listening to this fascinating story about the Lost Tetons because I was actually just doing some, some homework on that last night. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, the, uh, but no, the gatekeeper, uh, you know, th- that that collaboration, I guess, with uh, with er- Ernesto Perez Carrillo, mm. uh, that 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 cigar, you know, I, I I've already had it four times uh, since we got it here in our in our uh, lounge, and I, I'll tell you, that's just one of my new favorite uh cigars that that's that's come out so uh do you see any more lab is there going to be some more collaborations good question with with, like (laughs) anybody else (laughs) i you know i i don't i don't know at this point i know all right so alec and bradley are alan rubens two sons the namesakes of the company so they both you know joined the company over the last couple years you know bradley most recently after he left college Alex been on here for, uh, you know, four or five years at this point, I think after he left college, um, you know, they're, they're trying to get their feet wet. You know, their, their first blend was, um, blind faith, um, blind you know, blind faith and yes. two unknown 20 somethings that came out, you know, that didn't really want to live in their father's footsteps. Mm. You know, Alan, I remember sitting in that meeting, Alan's like, do you want to be my sons? Do you want to, you know, do you want to be known as that? you know, Alan Rubin sons and, you know, you, you make a cigar with the Alec Bradley name on it, or do you want to be known as your own cigar makers? You want to be known as second generation cigar makers. And they, they chose the latter. They threw yeah. their own money at it. You know, they had to go through the struggles and you know the trials and tribulations and the blending processes to start with that. And, um, you know, their first cigar came out of races, Cubana's factory in Donnelly, Honduras, which is for all intents and purposes, you know, I guess our, our home factory, Mm -hmm. Um, that cigar was successful on a limited production basis. And, um, you know, the, both of them, you know, I I think between, you know, that I work along with them in the marketing department, you know, we all kind of wear multiple hats, but, um, you know, we all sit around, we smoke other people's stuff to get an idea of what's different, what's out there. And as a part of that whole, you know, stepping away from their father type of idea, you know, they, they thought, you know, they, they've always been big fans of Ernie and uh, they reached out to Ernie and this was right around the time Ernie got cigar of the year. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a surprise to everybody that Ernie actually took on the project. Um, You know, Alan is very friendly with Ernie. He's known the boys uh, also for quite some time and he jumped at the chance. So uh, this is the first collaboration. I hope it's not the last personally. Mm. Um, yeah. somebody actually said, I, I think it was, it may have been Coop. It was like, uh, you should probably come out with a cigar in collaboration with your father. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but I can I, see, I, I, foresee, I foresee it. Yeah, I, I totally, yeah. totally can, 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 can see that. I can see, you know, I, I, you brought up a couple of interesting points, which states to the testament of the family run business, right? The father had given the sons a choice, right? You want to come in underneath the Alec, Alec Bradley umbrella, or do you want to be something that that's different? You want to do your own thing. And I also think that it's super cool that, you know, they they went to college, they finished college, they did that, because, you know, it it, it, it it just shows a testament that, like, you know, to, to be a father um, and give your son a choice if you're running a, a successful business, I, I think it's super cool that, that they were able to do that. And... Interestingly enough, moving forward, um, I'm sure they would collaborate, absolutely, but it'd be cool for them to get, like, a couple more sticks on underneath their belt and kind of see, like, you know, let, let's let face it, whether you're Alec Bradley or whether you're insert any name, bottom line is, right, people have to love your product. 
People have to like your product. People have to like your product enough to purchase it. You can take care of all the distribution and all the behind the scenes and, and quality control and all of that. But at the end of the day, you're going to push sticks. And, you know, it's not all about pushing sticks. I understand that, you know, the companies, they start and they love to use the passion word. And I started all of that. But, like, you know, his kids probably, you know, they grew up with that doing that. They have an opportunity. I'm excited to see the th third, fourth, fifth go around, whether it's a collaboration or not, and kind of see like where they stand. Not that I'm ever thinking that that they, uh, you know, have no, you know, legs to 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 stand on. But but that blind faith, interestingly enough, the marketing behind it, I think, was phenomenal. Right? I talk a lot about this about my interview. I am a business marketing position guy. I've, you know, done, I, I love the fact that that detail of the marketing aspect of that stick was, was put into that. I think the collaboration with a well-known brand and a well-known person, smart move. Like I said, um, you know, hopefully next IPCPR and I know we have FDA and all that stuff, but I, I can't wait to, to see what, what the third, fourth and fifth stick are going to be. Yeah, Alec and I are headed down to Honduras on uh, on Monday. To, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we're going to go down there for is to blend the next project. Nice. See, it's coming so, soon. Really, I like it. Really, awesome. really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, so, so when you talk to them in future interview, by all means, when you speak to them, they open invitation. They come out whenever they want. You can give my email. We can schedule. I can do a separate interview with them. If you want to schedule one with Laws, that's fine. If you want to schedule a separate one with Alan, that's fine too. Um, you know, and like wondering like what, so, so you work side, side by each, as we say here in the Northeast, you work side by side <laughs> with them, right? Like what's Correct. their palette like? Like, like, what are they like? It's completely different from Alan's. I can, that, I can tell you that. That's intriguing. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, that's awesome. Spe specifically Bradley, Bradley. You know, Bradley knows what he wants. You know, we all like, you know, we're, we're a Honduran, Nicaraguan yep. cigar company, you know, a heavy Honduran, heavy Nicaraguan. And, you know, Gatekeeper was something completely different. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the Ecuadorian rapper on there. We got Dominican in the filler. I mean, Dominican, we haven't really touched Dominican since Alan started the company. And we worked with, um, you know, with, with Davidoff way back in the 90s. So, uh, they, I would want to say that between Alec and Bradley, they have a much more experimental palette mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. say Alan. Um, you know, I believe, I, I think we can all, you know, the three of us, we can all appreciate different blends and, you know, different rolling styles, different blending styles, you know, as Alec Bradley tends to be more that traditional, Hey, you know, we are a Honduran slash Nicaraguan cigar company. I think, the, the boys bring on that, that new generation of, you know, the experience and, you know, playing with different tobaccos and, and trying something different to speak to a, a different audience. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm, I, that's awesome that you guys are traveling soon and, and putting some stuff together. So looking mm -hmm. forward to it. And, and I also like the idea that it's experimental for them and if they were a smaller company on their own they would be labeled as you know like that whole boutique and small blend and small batch or whichever you want to label it as but the fact that they have a, a a chance to to work with the players in the industry um sky's really the limit i mean you could really really like blow your consumer socks off for sure you know very 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 unique and and you know the the uh, gatekeeper, which I'm smoking right this second. Mm -hmm. The packaging, the bands. I mean, you, you wouldn't expect this from Alec Bradley. Yes, right. You really wouldn't. Right. So mm -hmm. it's truly, truly, truly the boys' company, the boys' passion, and what you know they enjoy. Yeah. And you know, hopefully that uh, you know they you know the the consumers enjoy that as well. Uh, but I can tell you, the gatekeeper is killing it right now. It's getting out there. People are oh, loving yeah. it. I even think it's something different, completely different than what you would expect from Ernie. Yes. You know, pe yep. people tell me that it doesn't taste like a, a Carrillo cigar. Right. Right. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, without hogging up all the time, Drew, I apologize. I'll talk. I've, I'll stop after two, uh, a couple more minutes. When I came across the gatekeeper and the project 40, my first inclination, like, uh, you know, a Alec Bradley, 
like I said, I'm a fan of the, the, the Tempest when they came out. Uh, not the Tempest Maduro. Then you guys had a run. Uh, was it Cigar of the Year or, or it was the, Posa- the Posadio, right? Prin- Prensado Church yeah, was the, Cigar of the Year yeah, 2011. Yeah, it was Cigar of the Year there. And then you come out with, with this, like Project 40 and the Gatekeeper. And I'm like, wow, like this is interesting. You know what I mean? It, it's like one of those times where it kind of brought me back. Uh, to Alec Bradley, you know, and it's nothing, Mm -hmm. it's not, you know, as a consumer and as a stogie geek, we get slammed with cigars. I mean, you know, we get, we get cigars in the mail all the time, people trying to do whatever they got to do and getting interviews and going through it. There's just only so much freaking cigars that, that we could get through. But like when, when I had the gatekeeper first, I was like, oh, wow, this is really, really different. And then when I had the project 40, I was like, wow, man, like this is awesome. You know, you. Um, take us through that that Project Forty for 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 the listeners, and then Drew can ask Pro- a question. Go ahead, Drew. I have to start. <laughs> Project Forty. Project Forty is something I think that that one's completely different. That was uh, you know Alan. You know that that was something completely different for Alec Bradley in general, stepping out of our comfort zone. Um, you know, we had the opportunity to work with Jesus Fuego. Uh, I know Alan's always been wanting to work with Jesus. Um, you know, and Jesus has gone through his different iterations and, you know, his company and you know, when he was a master blender for Rocky, so on and so forth. Um, and we got this opportunity, you know, Jesus is mind blowing when it comes to blending. Mm. You know, he's also an agronomist, you know, the guy knows tobacco, like I, I, I it's almost uncomparable to, to, you know, his abilities and, you know, he blew us all away with this, this blend and this, you know, the blend, uh, the brand we created from it. Um, you know, Brazilian, uh, I, I don't even think we use Brazilian in anything else outside of that. So sure. uh, to have a cigar that good who, you know, we got a 93 from Cigar Aficionado. Uh, Half Wheel gave us a 92. Coop gave us a 93. And the cigar average is 550 a stick right. without any excise tax. I mean, it's just mind blowing the type of you know, uh, um, you know, uh, critical acclaim we've gotten on that cigar so quickly. So uh, definitely experimental series. Experimental is, is definitely the correct word uh, for that cigar brand. Right. Is it experimental because of the company's track record in blends and where they're from? Or is it experimental as you just want to, like, mess around with, with, with some blends and, and, and see where it goes? Or probably a little bit of both. It, yeah, I think it's all encompassing, <laughs> sure. you know, working with Jesus, um, you know, playing with Brazilian tobacco, you know, trying a different factory, blending in a style that, you know, speaks to a different audience and doesn't, you know, completely speak to what we traditionally blend here. You know, that's all experimental. Mm-hmm. No question about it. Yeah. Yeah. Drew, you have a question? I have 10 more, but go ahead. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> The other cigar I wanted to bring up was was the uh, the Filthy Hilligan. I mean, I actually yes, had, just I had was one going of those. there. Yes. I was going there. I just didn't want to hog the time. Go ahead, Drew. No, no, no. You're good. Oh my gosh, man. Who 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 blended that? That 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 thing knocked my socks off. As far as you know, I don't do a lot of those uh, you know barber pole style cigars. I look at those. I'm like, mm, okay. You should, that's Drew. Just... But anyway, that's another discussion. We'll do a we'll up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, but yeah. Give us a little bit on that. I mean, that thing is, that's awesome. I love it. That is, you know, that's, it's funny. Cause uh, it's, it's so funny. I, before I got hired, you know, I, uh, they, they sent me down here to Fort Lauder for it for a day. And, um, you know, while I was interviewing somebody, somebody, you know, threw a candela in front of me. He's like, what do you think of a candela? I thought, it kind of depends on the blend. I lit right. it up. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, not everybody here is a, a gigantic fan of Candela. It just so happened that rapper really, you know, really made that blend. You know, it, for all intents and purposes, is a black market with a Candela wrapper on mm-hmm. it originally. So if you go back to the original Philly Hill again, that was 100% Candela. Did well, but, um, you know, the market, you know, it's not 1920-something, 1930-something. You know, Candela hasn't been a big thing in a very, very, very long time. So... You know, as we move through the the Candela and doing 100% Candela, you know, we decided to put that darker Nicaraguan on there to make that uh, that barber pole. That is 
by far one of my favorite cigars. Yes, yeah. And I, I'm sorry, it only comes out once a year because yeah. I could smoke those every day. That is actually one yeah. of my favorite cigars post the original Alec Bradley Tempest, right? But like, like uh, that cigar is is awesome. And whenever and, and obviously it comes out around St. Patrick's Day, it's so around mid no mm-hmm. mid November. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mid uh sorry, I was up watching I was I was up watching the Patriots game and the who the hell's gonna play the Yankees game last night, so I'm a little you know plus I'm drinking this whiskey instead of my bloody Mary. But anyway, um when I first had that it was the like the black mock and then every year I look for I always get a box you know, the the shop owner always puts a box together and I and I get them every year and they usually la- I'm not a cigar saver. So like mm-hmm. these tempest, these original te- like yeah, they're gone in like freaking like like sixty days tops, right? Mm-hmm. It, probably forty days. Anyway, right? And and so like I'm not a saver, right? I've always expected on the show, and so I go and and I look forward to yearly um, when cigars come out. For example, the filthy hooligan is in that rotation for my yearly calendar. Not Stogie Geeks. It reminds me of right around Thanksgiving. The Altero Fluente and Yeho comes out for the for that, so I always get I always get a box of those as well, and and you know so I have a I have a couple of cigars that are that are yearly uh, to me for either w- whichever, but that Filthy Hooligan is 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 so cool. Um, I've noticed that you know I don't know it's just me, that, like it was a little bit stronger when it first came out. You know what I mean? And then to me it just kind of I don't know if it's tobacco crop or whichever it just kind of that Nicaraguan component that you get, that natural Nicaraguan, you get the retro hail, leaves you with that pepper, right? It just, mm-hmm. it, it to me, like the originals were super cool. But I'm also a fan of the Candela Rapper. Like, I love the, um, uh, I think it's a cane, the Rocky Patel, not cane, what the hell? Is it? The Edge, the Rocky Patel Edge Candela. The edge Candela. Like, that's yeah. a freaking. Super cool stick, you know what I mean? And I I like those as well, you know, when, when you know, they were rocking and rolling and all that stuff, but that's another story. But, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, so, yeah, so uh, I, I'm a super fan of the Candela because you get that, like, saltiness. At least I get that in my palate. You get that, that really saltiness, yeah. and, again, it kind of changes the blend. And the Baba Pole aspect is super cool. And it comes on St. Patrick's Day. Who the hell doesn't like a Guinness? Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you uh, that 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 uh, Ecuador Sumatra. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, and again, I'm just really getting geekish on that. But man, that that really comes through the flavors, the the the, the aroma there. I mean, it's not like super overpowering, but it's just like it's something different. And when that candela, like you said, when you're smoking a candela, and I, I kind of, I don't I don't go to those quite often, uh, just like I wasn't doing the Lanceros prior. Man, that was, I mean, I, I I love that stick. And, yeah, I bought the rest of them that we had here <laughs> to yeah. put that in my regular awesome. rotation for sure. I love talking to the marketing guy because then we can get into product, you know what I mean, as opposed to historical stuff of Alec Bradley. Take us through the Magic Toast. And, magic Toast. Yeah, the Magic, because that's interesting. I love Magic Toast. That's interesting as well. That uh, You know, it looks like, to me, it's marketed as a nightstick. It's a great morning stick. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> No, it's got a great it's got a great sweetness to it. Mm. I mean, my regular rotation right this second is definitely Magic Toast. Interestingly enough, you know, uh, obviously it wasn't around in the seventies, eighties, nineties, but um, you know, in the two thousands when I was working in retail, Lars was a big thing in our shop, so it's kind of reminiscent. You know, so I've been smoking a lot of Lars too, mm-hmm. um, and then you know, Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is an outstanding stick, and I'm smoking right now. That's part of my regular rotation as well. Um, but no magic toast, it's just got a great natural sweetness to it. I do, you know, smoke it with morning coffee. I smoke it in the afternoon. It's just, uh, you know, interestingly enough, it, it hasn't really gotten great scores, but I'm okay with that. Black, nar- black market's never gotten great scores either, but to date, since that cigar came out, it's still our number one selling cigar, but, uh, magic toast, man, that is just a, a great, 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 great blend. I yeah. really do enjoy that cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, Marketing significant behind the the name or anything like that you want to spill out or? Yeah, I mean the significance behind that, you know, it's it's a real funky name. Yep. You know, it, it goes back to you know Alan went to Honduras 
met up with some of his business partners there. There was a new field that was just purchased. Uh, the story goes, it was, you know, twilight and it was like a magical night. And, you know, Alan kind of has that, uh, you know, he's got that reminiscent thing going on too. And, you know, when a moment strikes, it's all about the experience and for all intents and purposes, it was a, a magical night. And, uh, you know, we're all big scotch drinkers over here. There happened to be some scotch available to them at the time. And they, they toasted on the field and magic toast. There you go. I love it. I love hearing stories like that. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, man, we're going to call it uh, pink and yellow. Why? Because what came up on a TV screen was pink and yellow, man. It was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Uh, That's super cool. You know what got me through, like, timeline? I know I'm kind of bouncing around, but, you know, I'm scatterbrained in in real life anyway. So welcome to the show, Jonathan. Um, What what was super cool was the um, the, – over here, I'm looking. It was I just had it, and I switched the. Sc- there was a risotto wrapper. Hold on, N- not Nico Piero risotto. Nico Piero, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The, like, like that, that, that risotto wrapper. That was pretty good. That was a good stick. You know, very tasty cigar. Yep, ninety-one rated. It didn't really translate in the U.S. for some odd reason. We're still making that cigar for Europe. The Europeans love that wrapper. They love that cigar. Mm. But uh, no, it was tasty rated very well but for some reason did not translate in this country yep even the nick Apuro, the 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 regular though all the first one whatever came out i'm, I'm sorry i'm assuming yeah, the nick, the first, yeah yep. like that was like super yep. a super cool stick too like you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and because us as consumers we get smashed with freaking everybody else's stick right you know what i mean it's like it kind of just you know you, you kind of have this unorganized cue of what you like and and then when i was like oh yeah you know alec bradley man they make like like i like the nick capuro uh better than the black market series my opinion uh there um but definitely like where you guys are going um is super cool is definitely thank super cool um thank you you, one more. Oh, the fine and fla- fine and rare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh. Did I? I don't even know if I got those. I think I did. I, don't I know. haven't had one of those yet. I haven't. I, I, I honestly have not had one of those yet. Yeah, if no. I got it, maybe cool. But actually, I think I I I do have it because the 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 label looks familiar. But yeah, um, a couple of our a couple of our lounge uh, uh, patrons that come through, they they were telling me that's. That's what I gotta get my hands on, so I'll definitely be getting a hold of those I, soon. Fine and rare is fine and rare is more of a project and less of a cigar. I mean, that goes back to um, like, uh, 09 is when Alan mm-hmm. started that project, but uh, it, it started as it's a ten tobacco blend, and every year there's a different iteration. Always ten different tobaccos, but the blend always changes. It's always you know, well, not always, but it tends to be a different size every year. We've uh, duped one size before or one or two sizes before, um, but we've tweaked the blend over time. And there is another one coming out. I can't speak on it. I can't speak to the date. I can't speak to the blend, but there is another one coming soon. Mm. Nice. Awesome. And so it'll be called the same thing. So that's always in, a, fine, right? that's always in mm-hmm. a, like a conveyor belt of ever-changing blends. Correct. That's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Each iteration has its own little name and marker, um, and they all have some type of meaning to the company. Um, it's either three or four letters, followed by some numerical value, and there's always a meaning. And I don't, I don't always know those meanings, and sometimes I won't even ask Alan what they are. But uh, you know, there's always a meaning to that cigar, and there's always a special reason that cigar comes out. Mm. True. Have you had the Texas Land Zero? Yes. I have. See, they're, they're not big on Lanceros over here in the Northeast. So tell oh, us this, about that there one. There it too. is. Uh, oh, you got it. Oh, All right. Look this, at that. He's got one. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a wordplay on Lancero, of course. Uh, Actually, you, you reviewed that, didn't you? Yes, I did. All right. Yes, I that's did. why it sounded familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. This, yep. All right. Go for it. Yep. Yeah. No, I was just, just going to say that. I, you talk about marketing and just – you know, the wordplay on this Lancero, when I tell people, oh, I got a Lancero for you to try, <laughs> I always bring this stick. <laughs> and they're looking at me like, that's not a Lancero. <laughs> I say, like, yeah, it is. It says so right here on the band. <laughs> that's right. Everything's I bigger that. in Texas. Yeah. That's right. I said, you guys like your uh, your uh, 
chicken fried steaks as big as a manhole cover, why not try their Texas Lancero? I mean, right after you eat that uh, man uh, manhole cover of a chicken fried steak. So you give that no, a good I, rating, right, Drew? <laughs> Oh yeah! All right, oh, don't be afraid like, if it was bad. No, 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 no. This is like one of my favorites. This is, I, I, I take a box of Thank these sticks you. with me pretty much anywhere I go, just so when I want to blow some people's minds that come here from LA or, you know, from the Northwest, you know, I'm like, oh, here, I got a cigar for you. <laughs> so no, one of the one of my favorite cigars as well. And I'll tell you, uh, a lot of people, I mean, they 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 love the flavor profile in it. Uh, it, it, it burns well for being. The, uh, for what it is, uh, the size, anyhow. Uh, but you will be sitting down for a while. You you will have a, a good hour and, and a half, you know, um, to sit down and enjoy that that stick for sure. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to get some from you, Drew. We're gonna do a stick trade. Yes, we will. For sure, I remember that. I remember that one. I remember now when when you were reviewing. I was like, put that on your list to oh, yeah. to do it. It's it's really weird, Jonathan. Like you know, Drew's down to Texas. And obviously, I'm up here in the Northeast, and and so when we do sticks of the week on the second segment of of Story Geeks, like it's it's super cool when we get to stuff that like we both have no access to other than online, but like we would normally, you know, it's like oh yeah, this is an everyday smoke for me, and I'm like you got that, like holy crap, you know what I mean? But <laughs> you know, I I still get amazed at the di- at the distribution wow factor. I don't know what to say. It's just you know. I find that like utterly amazing. Like, really, you can go to Northeast, but you can't go to Texas, and they probably sell ten times more cigars in Texas than Northeast. But you know, it's all oh, good. Texas Lancero, you could get that all over. The- <laughs> Believe it or not, that cigar is unbelievably popular in Hong Kong. Really, our oh, Hong yeah. Kong the yeah. distributor buys those things. It's unbelievable how many Texas Lancero that guy buys and distributes. Unbelievable. Mm. Awesome. So, what what are some of the popular sticks that? Like might not have kind of caught on with the, with the states that have over the other side. Uh, Sanctum is very popular overseas. Um, that cigar was fantastic. I still love that blend. Uh, Coyol does very very yes. well in the European mm-hmm. countries. Very well. Um, I think it has more to do with. I mean, the flavor is great, and the the and I hate using this word, but it's a really good word to descri- describe it. Uh, the blend and the flavor profile is very Cuban-esque. Sure. I really hate that word. I was going to use old the, school. Like, like I was yeah, wondering, like, old school. Like, like it's like a, the, the, the Creole is, is like an old school smoke. I, I, in, I enjoy that Definitely. as well. Yeah. And the packaging is very reminiscent of a, of a Cuban box too. So that definitely helps, but that cigar really kicks ass in, in Europe, uh, along with Sanctum and Nica Rosado, uh, all three fantastic blends, all three never terribly caught on in the United States. Mm. True. You have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask. Uh, with, you know, with so many cigars for consumers to choose from, how are you? How are? How is Alec Bradley? You know, marketing to to keep. You know, uh, I, I mean, not that it's a problem because everywhere I go, I've seen Alec Bradley. But uh, uh, just for our listeners, uh, how, how do you help consumers find uh, uh, Alec Bradley products over your com- competitor? So, um, you know, this is a few things that we do. Um, you know, we have a fantastic sales team in the United States. We have a fantastic, you know, partners in Canada, in Europe, uh, in Asia and across the world. And, um, you know, those, those different, you know, um, distributors, I would say, you know, they kind of, they run their business the way they want to run their business. They choose the cigars that, you know, speak to their markets and fill in their portfolios, you know, on the United States side, you know, our, our sales team, you know, there are brand guidelines that they all follow. There are setups and stores, you know, shelf talkers. Um, we have these shelf flags that, you know, help separate our areas in, you know, in uh, brick and mortar. Um, we have a fantastic, you know, uh, key accounts manager who works really well with the online guys and our distributor partners as well. Um, we do our advertising and we have some print advertising. We're doing a lot of banner ads right this second. And we, you know, we, we choose, you know, we choose cigars that we want to push in a month and a quarter, you know, things that people, you know, used to buy and they just got to be, you know, again, going back to, to uh, you know, Joe's point, there's so many cigars out there and even within one's portfolio, 
you know, something might be hot at the moment. And then you, mm-hmm. you stop taking a look at something that used to be hot. It's like, Oh, you know what? This was a great blend. People have to smoke it again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we target these things and uh, we, we get it back in the, in the faces of consumers and uh, you know, people uh, who enjoy cigars, you know, it, it's much, much harder post FDA that you just can't give out samples to, you know, every guy that you walk in the shop. So, you know, FDA has made it a lot harder, not just for Alec Bradley, but for every single cigar manufacturer to get that point across. And you really have to, you know, you survive on whatever marketing efforts you have in house and then survive on, you know, what the brick and mortars are doing and, you know, making sure that they support the product, they support their rep. Um, And the same with online guys, you you really have to look to your tobacconist for that support. And we do our very best to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. a good point. Like with the, with the retailers, because I know that you know uh, some retailers listen to this show and other podcasts as well to get the interviews and stuff like that. And and that that's been some of the feedback that I've received. And you know, it's like the when you're dealing with 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 the retailers. You know, some of them get it, some of them don't get it. We're not going to get into that, but, you know, like you offer a different situation as opposed to other key facings that are out there. So obviously I don't put you in that boutique section. When you walk into a um, humidor, any humidor that has over 80 facings, right? There will be an Alec Bradley product there, right? It's for sure. There's going to be an Alec Bradley uh, uh, product there. Like, wh- do you almost have to, like, rekindle? Like, Nick Apuro, right? Like, that hasn't come up on Stogie Geeks from my mouth in probably a year and a half. And it's not like, like, for no other reason other than, again, we get flooded with so much other stuff, new stuff, new stuff, new stuff, yep. that, you know, it just kind of gets there. And then so when, so when your sales rep, any territory, walks into to, to, to the shop and says, hey, you know, what do you think about adding on a box of Nick Apparel? What? Like, what? Uh, mm-hmm. what, what? You guys still make those? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and again, it's not an Alec Bradley thing. It's an everybody's it's thing. You know what I mean? It it's, it's an everybody's thing. And, 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 you know, especially as if, especially with you guys, you've been around for a while, so you have a bigger line in some of the boutiques that might not have a bigger line and then they get bigger. But if you fast forward 20 years from now, non FDA, they're going to have just as big a line as you guys. And, and, and it's, how, how do you combat that? Like, do you have, like, do you, like, I imagine you, you get the sales team and say, hey, man, like, you know, we got some, you know, and, and again, I'm not picking on any particular brand. Yeah, but I'm, no. I'm trying to go back in the, in the time machine, right, mm-hmm. of, of your timeline of success, right, which you've had one because you're still in business. And, you know, you, you, right? I mean, you know. Yeah, we are, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're on, like. I every, like being employed. Yeah, sure. You know, but, <laughs> but, but as you go through that, like, like how do you rekindle? that effort like especially now like with you want to you know you might focus on the kids alec and bradley and what their Mm -hmm. stuff is new because sometimes as a company as big as yours you can fall victim to that as well there's no question about that and i I can't say it's easy it's definitely not easy i think that um uh online media you you guys you know other bloggers people that do interviews uh things like that Um, you know, we do have a very long line of products and, you know, our competitors, you know, there's new products all the time. There's complimentary products out there and we have new products. I, it's, it's just, it's tough. You know, every now and again, we try to refocus. And I think that, uh, you know, our efforts now to target brands on a monthly or quarterly basis and, and speak to those brands. And, you know, whenever we have those, uh, brands that we choose, we choose three to four brands a quarter. And we say to the sales team, Hey, you know, this is what we are focusing on. You know, don't, don't take your mind off of the new stuff. Don't take your mind off of magic toast on gatekeeper on blind faith on, you know, those items. But you know, this month or this quarter, we're going to focus on Nico Porto. We're going to focus on Texas Lancero, the lineage, so on and so forth. And for that quarter, um, you know, those, the, the sales and those things spike. Like I said, we have a fantastic, fantastic sales team. You know, uh, the key accounts manager who is now also the vice president of sales. You know, I work along with him 
it's almost symbiotic. And, you know, when marketing comes down and we say, you know what, this is going to be the brand focus for this quarter or for this month, you know, everybody's on board. Yep. Everybody's on board and it goes back to the retailers and it's like, you know what, you need to add back Nico Porto because this is why you need to get lineage back in here. This is why, you know, mm-hmm. surprisingly, I thought, I personally thought that, you know, the seven set by 70 craze was over. You mm. know, we've seen the waves and ebbs and that. And then um, I think last quarter we, we did banner ads and we did some you know backups on Texas Lancero and Texas Lancero sales spike. So mm-hmm. uh, mark, marketing does work. And I yep. think that's what keeps me employed. So, yep. Yep. Right. So, so you almost have to really, just like the consumer, you you yourself as a company have to sit back and say, okay, we at, you know we're we're doing a big push for this, but we should probably right. put a little spotlight on this and kind of see where yeah. it goes and and <clears throat> and you know rekindle something that is still available, you know, right. um, you absolutely know, because it happens. And again, it depends on the retailer and and in in his or her volume. But it happens when, you know, they all focus on new, 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 new. And then yep. you, the, the old ones are still sitting there. And by the way, just for if you're listening, in, those new ones, uh, those older ones that have been sitting there, they're aging. So they're going to get even better. <laughs> what I was going like to say. I like that. <laughs> what I was going to add to that was that I actually, we actually uh, printed out all the Alec Bradley product lines that are that are out or that are uh, they that I've been there for a while and our, our guests here at our lounge are like, Oh, I haven't had the ex- occidental reserve, you know, you know, a few years ago, you know, I like to see that back. So that, that, so the new also brought back the thought of, Oh, well, I remember this cigar, you know, the remnants, the remnants uh, of that cigar. And they were like, you like to try that again, or, you know, or like to get some of that again. So that, that's what that new has done here at our store is it's rekindled them to go visit some of the other ones that, yeah. that were in the past. So Absolutely. That's pretty cool. and, 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 and ultimately it is up to the retailer to put something together on their end to, you know, put, get, get the product back in and whatnot, as opposed to, to focus on new. Cause you, you know, you can go down to vortex as a, as, as a retail business owner and focus on new. And next thing you know, eight months have passed and, and you're like, oh, I forgot about the other stuff. And wow, when I go back and check my sales records, I'm like, why did I get rid of that freaking this stick? It freaking sold, you know. <laughs> so you never know, you know, you never know. So you geeks, make sure you go to alecbradley.com. Check them out. Check them out on social media. Um, Jonathan, is there anything else that you want to add? No, oh, I I really appreciate the time. I appreciate the support. Uh, Joe, Drew, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, man, it was, it was a pleasure having you. And please extend the invitation. I'd love to get Alec and Bradley on separate. Lost Teetons, if you can hone him down. I don't know if he's into this thing, but he'll be all right. Of course, yeah. You know, he'll absolutely. Be, he'll, be, he'll be all right. You know, I, I, I would like that out. Like, he's going to get like a 20 minute intro from me. Like, I'm going to be like, dude, <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, do you ever do a, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him if he's ever done a board slide on his metal skateboard because those are slippery as hell. I'm just I, believe, I was I was never a skater, but I'm sure you can answer that question. For you, know, you, Joe. you know what I mean? But yeah, man, I used to yeah. shred, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> anyway, Jonathan, thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Thank you for your time and good luck with everything. If you have any product announcements that you want us to do on the show, just flash us an email and we'll and we'll get that done for you. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stow right. your geeks. Thanks. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back. Second, second.